Hello everyone, this is Sam Gabriel. I'm excited to share with you the last video in our four video series about how developers can make use of the different HashiCorp uh, products in their development. So today we're going to talk about Nomad in conjunction with Console, Terraform, and Vault. So pretty much the entire Hashi stack. So let's dive right in. So for today's demo, we're going to uh, see how first everything is deployed. So in this case, I'm using GitHub as the version control system. Upon a commit and a push, Terraform uh, plans and then applies the infrastructure that I need. And basically, I use Terraform to deploy Nomad and uh, console, a Nomad and a console cluster inside of Google's cloud platform. Uh, we already deployed Vault in previous uh, episodes or videos. So Vault is already running in a GKE instance inside of, uh, inside of uh, GCP. And so we're going to utilize that deployment. Uh, we're not going to deploy it over again. The, the next piece here, I'm going to talk about the application workflow itself. Uh, once again, with my GitHub uh, version control system, upon a commit and a push, uh, Terraform actually uses the Nomad provider to go ahead and create a job inside of Nomad to run my application. Uh, so upon uh, an app live from, uh, from Terraform, you can see we deploy uh, Python, uh, the Python Flask app, and also MongoDB. So two containers get uh, deployed inside of Nomad. Here's my Nomad and console cluster. Console takes care of all the networking, and Nomad runs the jobs. Uh, in addition, the Python app makes use of Vault, so reaches out to Vault to get the credentials to be able to log into MongoDB. And once again, we are using dynamic database credentials inside of Vault. Also, the Python app is encrypting the content of the web blog's posts. So they live encrypted inside of MongoDB. Uh, console service mesh, we covered this in a, uh, on um, uh, video number three when we were talking about console. So we're going to use uh, console mesh or service mesh in this demo as well for this application. So our Python Flask app is going to talk to the Mongo database through the Envoy proxies. So let's, uh, let me walk you through the demo steps, what I'm going to show here, kind of give you an overview uh, of what's going to happen. So first we're going to look at the web blog app. And this is going to get deployed with uh, without console service mesh, so directly uh, using networking in Nomad. And we're going to do that via Terraform. Next, we're going to dive into the UI of both console and Nomad to show you the services that got generated and the Nomad job that, that got generated as well. Then we're going to look at the weblog app with console connect. Now we're going to apply the service mesh. And again, we're going to deploy uh, another Nomad job using Terraform. Then we're going to look at the application, uh, how it's actually going to be broken in the beginning. So the application won't work when you deploy it because um, we didn't allow intentions for the application. So we're going to allow the intentions for the Python uh, app to talk to the database. Uh, after that, we're going to see how uh, console will automatically, or Nomad will automatically register the uh, proxies inside of console. And uh, we'll see how Vault is actually working as well and how the app is pulling the credentials for the database dynamically. And uh, we'll also look at the content of the posts and how they're encrypted with Vault. And finally, we're going to show you that we've done all this with ACL tokens inside of Nomad and Console for security reasons. So we're going to remove the, the, uh, the ACLs and show you how you don't have access to the UI. You can't really do anything without, uh, without those ACLs. All right, let's dive right in. Uh, first of all, let me show you the uh, Nomad UI. As you can see here in my jobs, there are no jobs running. Uh, the WebLock Console Connect is dead here. Uh, from a services perspective inside of console, this is the console UI. Uh, I only have console Nomad Nomad Client running. Uh, by the way, I have uh, a one, one server that's running both console and uh, nomad as servers, and then I have two uh, nomad clients and also two nomad, uh, sorry, two nomad clients and also two nomad, um, no, two console clients as well. 
Okay, so let's uh, look at the app. The app is not running. Nothing is uh, is running yet. Let's jump into my uh, workspace inside of Terraform. So I'm running Terraform Cloud here. And the only environment variable that I've set is the Nomad token. So this is sensitive, so you can see it's encrypted here, so you can't see it. Uh, and this is what's going to allow Terraform to talk to Nomad to do some of the configurations, basically to run the jobs. Okay, let's run a job. So go back to my Visual Studio code. And I have two jobs here, one with no mesh and one with the actual console uh, service mesh. So that's done. Let me save it. And I'm going to say with, without mesh. Commit that. I'm going to push it. Once that gets pushed to GitHub, that should start the, uh, the run here. As you can see, the run is started. So without mesh, that's what I committed. So we're going to go through the planning phase um, and then go ahead and apply. As you can see, one uh, resource is going to get applied, and that's the job inside of Nomad. All right, so that's done. I'm going to apply this. Let's go ahead and confirm the plan. All right, so that's it. It's pretty fast. Uh, one resource has been added. Let's jump into our Nomad screen. As you can see, web blog no mesh is now running. Uh, you can dig a little deeper here. And you can see this task groups. I'm also interested in going and looking at the allocations. So if I go here, look at those allocations. So I have one web, group, web blog group. So let's take a look at our services that are running now. You can see my front end and my MongoDB is now running. Let's go and take a look at my application. Here's my application. I can see my posts. Here's my blog of the cars, the dinosaurs, what we're used to. So now this is running in Nomad with the help of console and vault. Okay, now let's go ahead and change this to use the console connect service mesh save it go ahead and say your console connect service mesh and let's go ahead and commit that and let's push it to github all right cool Take a look at our runs. Here's a new run with Console Connect Service Mesh. So it's, it's going to create a new job and it's going to destroy the old job. Let's confirm that. And using Terraform is a good way to keep track of, uh, of what you're deploying, what jobs you're deploying, and so on. So you know what jobs are actually running right now, what's been deployed. Of course, you can run this through the CLI directly um, to run Nomad jobs directly, but I found it's quite, uh, quite handy to use Terraform to do that. Okay, let's go back, take a look at our jobs here. Now the web blog no mesh is dead, and the web blog console connect job is now running. Uh, looking at service console, the services inside of console. Uh, now you can see there's a MongoDB sidecar proxy that got generated and also the Python front-end sidecar proxy in addition to the Python front-end and MongoDB services as well. So now we're running through the mesh. Let's take a look at our application. Uh, this should be dead now. Yeah. Let's take a look. Our application for console service mesh is running on port 8080. Um, and actually it, it worked. I forgot uh, to remove the intentions here. So the Python front-end intention works and talks to MongoDB. I can go ahead and actually deny that to show you that I'm not cheating. And this should break my application. So if I reload here, internal server error, of course, because now I can't talk to the database. So going back here, 
I'm updating this to allow my Python front-end service to talk to MongoDB service. Okay, all is good. This should uh, go ahead and work. And there you go, works perfect. Okay, so next, what did we do so far? We've gone through all of this. Um, let's take a look at Vault uh, or how, how we're getting the dynamic database credentials. So jumping back into my job, I can exec into the containers straight from here. And uh, let's go and take a look at the allocations. Um, let's go ahead and look at here. Front-end task and take a look at the logs. Okay, so I have um, in the in the applications you've seen before, if I start moving here and, and interacting with the application, every, um, I think I set it for two minutes, I will get a new set of username and passwords. And you can see at the bottom here, this is a new username and password that are unique every time I call uh, Vault to get the credentials to the MongoDB. So these credentials are just different from these ones. If I uh, just go ahead and interact with the application once again, you should be able to see a new set of credentials that got generated. And there you go. So we're, we're showing here that dynamic database credentials are working to secure my application. I also want to show you how we're using Vault to encrypt the content. So here's my weblog encrypted database. I have the posts um, uh, collection inside of MongoDB. And in here, I can see the title and the content itself is encrypted, as you can see here. It's a bunch of gibberish. If I hover over, you can see that the content of the posts itself is, uh, is encrypted. All right, excellent. So that uh, pretty much wraps most of the demo up. All I need to do now is go ahead and remove the, uh, the token, the ACL token. So if I clear this token, and if I go in here and do the same with my ACL, stop using, log out, perfect. So now if I go into Nomad and click on jobs or storage or anything, you can see not authorized. Uh, I have to supply an ACL token. Same thing here inside of console. Um, so both Nomad and console are secured. Uh, and also, if I look at my actual code itself, so this is the Terraform code that's running the, the jobs, but basically it's calling on some files here, the file that uh, it's running for weblog no mesh is weblog no mesh dot nomad. So really quickly, I'm going to go over this so that you get an understanding of what the job spec looks like inside of nomad. Uh, you can see at the top level is the job, then it's broken down into a group and broken down into different tasks. Um, one thing to note here is I'm using templating language. Uh, so console template to call on, let me, uh, Make this a bit readable to call on uh, Vault to supply me with the initial root username and root password for MongoDB to be instantiated, and that is supplied as an environment variable as the container launches. You can see the image that I'm using here for Mongo and what port I'm listening on inside of the container and the port that I'm listening on um, at the host level. There, here is the environment variable used to be able to talk from the Python app to the MongoDB. It's exposed through some environment variables from Nomad itself. Uh, this is the image I'm using for the Python app. It's listening on port 8001 inside the container, and I'm mapping this to port 8000 on the host. And you need this Vault policy stanza to be able to uh, uh, speak with Vault and uh, tell it to tell Vault who, what policies you're allowed to access or what policies used to access the, uh, the secrets that you need. So that's this one without console connect and this is with console connect. Um, pretty similar. 
different definitions here. For example, at the service level, this is where I identify the sidecar. Uh, doing the same thing with grabbing the credentials for the MongoDB from Vault. And here's where I'm identifying the Nomad upstream IP and Nomad upstream port. Uh, so again, environment variables available from Nomad directly to be used. So hopefully this has been helpful to show you how now we've moved into the entire Hashi stack. And just to summarize what we've seen so far, um, we've uh, been able to show how now I've, after the, the entire experiment that I've run through the, those last four uh, videos, I've been able to see when I'm in the shoes of a developer, how can I use the different uh, HashiCorp tools? Uh, starting from Terraform, then Vault, and Console, and all that was running on Kubernetes at the beginning, and then moving over everything to Nomad and see how to use Nomad as opposed to Kubernetes. Uh, my experience that it's been uh, very simple actually to use Nomad, and although I hadn't, hadn't used it before, I was able to come up uh, to speed very quickly. I've been using Kubernetes for a number of years now, so uh, it's you know I'm quite familiar with it. But I have to say that the learning curve with, with Nomad is, um, is much easier. So really, uh, the way we deployed this, we deployed everything using Packer to deploy the images uh, for Nomad and console into a, a 2GCP or 3GCP VMs. And uh, Terraform is used to configure both Vault and to run jobs in Nomad. So any new policies that I add into Vault, I use Terraform to do that uh, using the Terraform uh, Vault provider. Also, Vault is used to supply the dynamic database secrets to the application, uh, in addition to encrypting them. We've seen that. And Nomad is used to run the application itself. And finally, console is what makes all networking work, and ha having everything come together uh, using the service mesh. So hopefully this has been helpful uh, for those of you who want to use or explore the different HashiCorp uh, tools. Uh, this kind of summarizes or brings together uh, the last or my experience over the last uh, three months uh, of using HashiCorp's tools. Uh, so hopefully this video has been helpful and uh, uh, thank you for watching.